Hi, class. I hope you're doing well this week. If you're like me, you are super busy. Uh, you're about up to here in work. And I know you're up to here in work because if your other classes are like this one, you've got a lot happening. Uh, happy note, though, there will be no video lecture this week. We're going to hold off talking about introductions and conclusions until we get back from spring break. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have already read that chapter, but if you haven't yet, you still have time to get all caught up. Ooh, we do have a lot of things going on. We just had your how-to speeches, and we're going to be talking about how those went in this weekly announcements and what's coming up lecture. Uh, but then we also have your midterm infographic assignment coming up. Oh my goodness, we've got your informative speech coming up and we're gonna talk about that just a little bit. So we have a lot to talk about in just this weekly um, getting everything done video. Uh, so keep watching. There are going to be things in this video that will be worth your while, trust me. Okay, so how-to speeches. I always love watching uh, my classes how-to speeches because I learn a lot about who you are as individual people. I'll give you an example. Um, I had a lot of people who this year did how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. A lot of people, you'd be surprised. Uh, one person did peanut butter and marshmallow fluff, which I was like, hey, <laughs> that's, a, that's a variation, cool. Um, I've had one of those too. Uh, ooh, that's sticky stuff. Anyhow, had some people, you know, would take three steps to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Some people take 10 steps to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Some people, you can tell this is something you really enjoy doing, the activity that they chose for themselves. And some people you could tell, I really just picked something because I had to pick something. And that makes me want to call you up and say, okay, you really need to find something, find a way to tie this to you. Because I know when you're older and you're having to give speeches for your work or for your community, a lot of times you don't get to pick what you're going to speak about. Um, you don't get to choose you know, topics that you find interesting or fun. This is the time to do that. So if you're not doing that now, it just makes me go, oh, you're making things harder for yourself, sweetie. Um, nonetheless, we will press forward. Uh, with the how-to speeches, we did have most people doing fairly well. Um, and everybody, I think, did a pretty good job explaining their demonstration, you know, showing how to do something. I think, you know, I learned a lot of interesting things, but quite a lot of people made one or two fatal flaws. Uh, things that honestly you should have known were going to be an issue. And really, there's not a good excuse for making those mistakes. And so got dinged by a lot of points. Uh, I'm going to tell you what they are. And, and it's really not many things, but we had some people who did a few of these multi-point things and it just kind of knocked them out. So we're gonna talk about a couple of things moving forward you really need to keep an eye on and make sure you're doing properly for your coming speeches because honestly, after this video, you know, the gloves are off. We really have to take things seriously. And if you're going to keep making easy mistakes, then mm, you're gonna lose a bunch of points. So the first one, let's pull up my screen and uh, talk about it, shall we? I think we should. So now I'm over here because uh, I want you to be able to see everything properly. So we're gonna go from, there we go. Uh, so if I'm covering up part of the words up there, I apologize, but uh, that part of the screen, I really want you to be able to see. So important things to remember. First thing, come on, I'm hitting the button. Why aren't you coming up? I'm going to go down here, maybe. Thank you. So orient your camera horizontally, not vertically. Horizontal, like the horizon. If you're looking at the horizon, it goes this way. Vertical is like top to bottom. We always, for all of our speech assignments, in fact, it's in the syllabus, we discussed it 
in the very first video I made for this class, all of our assignments, we orient the camera horizontally. Why do we do this? Because so many people for social media, they, they do this. It's easier to hold. They do. But if you're going to be a professional communicator, and that means business, science field, any field you're going to, you're going to have to communicate with people. And the vast majority of professional video shooting basically is horizontal and it's the proper way to do things. In fact, look at your laptop screen right now. Uh, tell me how it's oriented. If you've got your screen like this, um, and I just tried to turn my laptop so it would be vertical. It just didn't, doesn't even work really that way. Um, our TV screens, horizontal. Movie screens, horizontal. Camera screens, horizontal. Everything in our class needs to be horizontal. And I still had folks, and the example photos you're seeing on these slides, none of these people are in our class. So you don't have to worry about Oh gosh, what happened to him? You know, no, these are all people doing things that I saw our class doing. I'm not calling anybody out by name, so don't worry about that. But uh, you see the gentleman in the top photo. He's well dressed, he's got a suit. If you were to watch the whole video, he has got his stuff down. He's great. He has narrowed himself in this tiny little frame of a much larger screen. He's really limiting himself. He's put these two huge panels on either side of him of just wasted space. And it's just, ugh, I, I weep because look at the, the girl giving her speech down below. Now, yes, she's kind of cut off her head a teeny bit, but she's got space all around her that she can utilize. She's got her visual aid, the screen down there, and she's going to pull up some some slides in a minute and you'll be able to see she can gesture to them she can do a full amount of nonverbal body language you know guy at the top he's limiting himself you know if, if he's actually trying to talk to an audience be like hey hey you know she's got space she's able to utilize the whole amount of the video screen and that's what we want you to do so ah uh, like I said, this is like your end of the road reminder. After this, if I see too many more videos with this kind of orientation, ooh, it's just gonna be points flying out the window everywhere. All right, the second thing I really noticed isn't specific, but it's what people really should have done uh, to really save themselves from a bunch of unusual details. So let's see this next slide. The second thing to remember is please watch your speech. Watch the video before you turn it in. How do I know people didn't watch their speeches before they turned them in? You might have recorded several versions of them, but I can tell you, I don't think you watched very many of them. You probably recorded till you felt good about it. Um, and if you watched it, you might have been like, oh, I just don't want to do that again. Just, just turn it in. But some things were so egregious that I was like, there's no way they could have seen this and thought, mm, I'm going to turn that in. Um, we had one student who the sound went out halfway through the video and couldn't hear half of the speech. I thought, did they not know? Did that happen during the YouTube upload? Did this happen while they were recording? Um, yikes. Uh, now I couldn't show an example of that from another class because I can't really show that I can't hear anything. But for example, we had quite a few people who did like this gentleman um, in the top picture did where cut the top half of his head off. And, you know, I could see you're in a space, you think, okay, this is the space I have. Let's make this work. And look, he's got a great visual aid. He's got his poster with pictures on it. Um, I think he's giving a speech about the military. So he's got his army Navy t-shirt on. He's well, if we could see his eyes, I think he would be giving good eye contact, but that's part of the problem. In some cases, students in ours, you know, they didn't cut off their whole half of the head, but they cut off enough of it to where we just really need to take a look and see how we're oriented in the frame. If 
we're cutting off body parts or if we can see your visual aid but not you well or we see you but not your visual aid well you need to really consider how you're staging your demonstration or how you're staging yourself um you know, maybe the dining room was not the best place for this gentleman to do his video. Um, or maybe he could have moved his camera back a little bit. You see, when I'm moving back, suddenly I have all this extra space. And if I, you can see much more of me back here than if I'm way up here. So moving the camera back sometimes will help give you a larger space to work in. Maybe if he had raised his visual aid a little bit, then he could have oriented the camera a little higher, would have been able to see both his head and the visual aid. Um, but a lot of times it is trial and error. It's experimentation. And trust me, I do this a lot myself. Um, I, at my job, I'm outside a lot and I have to take a lot of videos of myself explaining things to people. I have to figure, okay, how am I going to set my camera up so I can see all of this activity behind me, but they can also see me explaining it, you know? Um, how can I put my camera in front of me in a way that, you know, it's right at eye level so people can see me looking straight and not looking like this or like this, but you also see what's around me, what I'm supposed to be talking about. You know, sometimes I can be center of the video and that's cool. But I also need to make sure you can see my whole head. And I just realized I went out of frame. So here I go. I'm trying to make it work for you all too. Um, I need to make sure I'm set up properly in the shot. So don't cut off your head. Notice the lady at the bottom picture. See her whole head perfectly well. It's really dark in there. Um, and I feel like if she had watched this video, after she had recorded it and kind of listened to her speech, you know, it, there are points at which she's using pretty decent nonverbal hand gestures, but you really can't see her hands moving very much or because it's so dark, the video gets a little patchy. Have you ever seen that? If you watch somebody who's doing a really dark video and the camera just cannot make out that much light, so the video turns very patchy and dim. It looks kind of foggy sometimes. And an even more interesting thing that's happening is because she's in such a dark space. When she is looking down, like she's looking at her computer screen, she's getting that reflection of light from the computer screen on her glasses, which means we can't see her eyes at all. Um, so, I understand a lot of times you might think I'm limited where I could give a speech. You know, I live with other people and sometimes I have to do my speeches at night and it's dark. I can't turn all the lights on in the house or maybe I live with uh, roommates and they might be doing things other places. You know, this is the only place I can do my speech. There's two things you can do. One of them is make your space serve you. So she probably needed turn on a light. <laughs> that would have solved some problem right there. And in fact, I've done it myself. I looked at my video earlier and I'm like, I'm so dark. Let me show you what it looked like before I started this. I have a light and I have off to the side. See that? I am backlit and ooh, the wrinkles are coming out. Don't look at me. So I had to set up a little desk light off to the side, which I turned on. Oh, I look so much better, thank you. Um, so you can see me. Uh, it's on like a little stand. My husband's desk is right over there. We both have a desk in our little house office. Uh, so I had to figure out how I can set on a light. Now, if I legit am gonna make people upset by turning on lights or talking too loudly, the second thing you can do if your space isn't working is find another space. You know, there are plenty of places on campus where um, you can find an empty classroom sometimes or an empty, uh, if you live in a dorm, they have communal spaces. You know, uh, sometimes they are full of people and sometimes they're not. Uh, this is why working on your speeches and working on recording them early in the week that you turn them in is the thing to do. Because if you wait till the day they're due, 
you don't have time to solve these kind of problems. And if you, if you look at yourself and you're like, Ooh, I'm super dark, or I have cut off the top of my head, but I have to turn this in very quickly. I still have to upload it to YouTube. I have to turn in the paper that has the YouTube link in it. I can't fix it. You're just going to have to deal with the point things as they happen. So getting things done early enough so that if you have any problems, you can fix them. That's very important. All right. This net third thing is related to the second thing, and it is think. <laughs> I want you to think. If you were watching this speech after you've recorded it, while you're watching it to make sure, oh, sound is good, and I haven't cut off my head, or you know, it's not too dark to look at. If you were watching this speech, what would you be thinking about? What would you be critiquing, basically? If you were me, what would you think about this? And this, the top image I have from this other speech is a good example of something that I had a couple of people did. I had a couple of people demonstrate athletic moves, which that's a cool idea for a speech, how to especially. I don't know how to properly shoot a basket or I used to be able, pretty good. I played a lot of softball, so I can swing a bat. Um, I used to play golf. It's been a while, but I enjoyed seeing people do athletic movements. And in the video that I stole this little image from, she explained she's on the women's basketball team at a university, which she's very tall. So that's kind of cool. Um, and she's, it makes sense that she, if she plays on the basketball team, she's going to pick how to properly shoot a basket. But she is, first of all, I know you looked at this and went, oh, she did it vertically. Yep. And by doing so, she it, it's not just that she did it vertically and limited her space, but look where she is. She's in a door frame. Um, so she's got this door frame next to her. It's got no light in it. So she really can't move too much. Um, and I just kept wondering, is this really the only place she could shoot her video? Because... You know, she's doing something with a lot of movement in it that would require her whole body. We want to see her whole body shooting the basket. And yet she's pushed herself in this vertical space for one. So if she turned her camera horizontally, she would have at least had a whole screen to work in. But she's also put herself in a physical space that's extremely narrow. And it just made me go, okay, first of all, she, she explains, you know, I don't have a basket here for me to shoot with. And, you know, I wouldn't have counted off for that. She had a basketball. That's a visual aid. It's fine. If she had been in a space that actually had a basket, though, she probably would have had enough space around her to really show proper stance, proper movement, technique, the whole thing. It would have been great. Now, I'm not saying she should have found a basket. It would have been good. But... I'm just saying, you know, okay, if you can't find a basket, if you can't be in a place that's suitable for the action you're trying to take, um, then you have to make your space work for you. And wherever she is, now maybe she lives with roommates, maybe their room is junky, she doesn't wanna show the whole room. I get that. Um, and it's like I said before, two things you can do if your space is not working for you. One, modify your space move your camera. The other fun thing about her was she was looking down at her camera. So wherever her camera is placed, it made her look even taller than she probably is. But it also, it gives her that kind of look where she's looking down at the camera. We want people to be looking straight on at the camera. But then, you know, she just really can't move properly. If you can't make your space work for you, then you need to find another space. I don't care if she would have been, you know, outside where there is a basketball goal or just outside in the grass where she has room to move around. Um, she could have been in another room. You know, she could have been in an empty classroom. She could have gone to um, a study carol in a space that's in a building on campus. You know, there are lots of places where you can find space to move and maneuver. Um, these kind of things tend to happen when you wait till the last minute to shoot your video and then whatever you shoot, that's what you're stuck with. Um, she probably just shot this 
turn it in. But if we're watching this, we're like, first of all, it just feels very constricted, confined. But secondly, we're not even seeing her give a good demonstration because we can't really see her body giving that demonstration. Okay. Um, the lovely lady below her. Um, now remember in your informative speech, you will have to have audience members too. So that's what you can kind of see the audience members, but you kind of even can't see your speaker because why she's oriented the camera so that she's got all this headspace above her and she's made herself tiny in the frame. So if I'm watching this at home, if I'm an audience member and I'm watching her give a speech, it could be the greatest speech. It could be just, mwah, you know, points, 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 except how distracting is that going to be? First thing I'm going to be thinking of is, wow, she looks tiny and she's got all that space, you know, and if you're trying to compete with all this empty stuff around you, it's just, it's difficult. It would be so much better if she and whoever shot the video, which is you're going to have to find somebody who can be your videographer for your informative speech, do a test shoot before you have your audience there, basically. So what are you going to do? You're going to set up whoever's going to be holding your camera. So you're going to give me, you're going to do a selfie. You're going, Hi, my name is such and such. This is my informative speech. Um, here's my audience. You're going to show your audience. But then when you give it to that person, you want to make sure you practice ahead of time how they're going to hold the camera so that you are well composed in the picture. Then you don't have to give your whole speech. This is a test. So basically you can say, I'm just going to count to 10 while you shoot this video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Then take the camera, take a look at it. Think, oh, I got this. Here's what we need to do. Can you hold it so it's like this? And maybe I need to zoom in a little bit. Let's try that. So have them hold the camera. You go back to where you make yourself a, a spot on the ground so you don't go to different places because wherever that is, it's going to mess up your shot. So you're going to find the same place to stand on. You're going to count to 10. They're going to shoot that 10 second thing. Go back and look at it. Okay, this is better. But can you hold it like maybe they need to hold more still? Uh, maybe they need to, you need to adjust a little bit more. Just do it a couple of times until you got a good shot. And then audience shows up, you do your video. And you don't have to worry about making sure everything is framed properly. And then even after you shoot what you think is a good version, watch it <laughs> because you never know. Something crazy can happen in the background. I can't tell you how many, when I was working in news, I'd be doing what they call a stand-up out in public and somebody would be walking behind me and they'd be like, ah, and I wouldn't know. And I would go and I'd look at the video. I'd go, okay, this is a pretty good one. And I'd see them walk by it. I'd be like, oh, I gotta do it again. If I hadn't looked, I would have taken it back to the studio and I wouldn't have been able to use it at all. Once I tried to edit it in because I'd be, ooh, it has idiot guy in it, dang. So even if you're thinking and you're prepping and you do a really great job, watch it again, make sure it's as good as you think it can be, and then turn it in. Whew, that's a lot. But it's really only three things. One, horizontal. Horizontal is right. Uh, the second thing is watch it before you turn it in. Um, there are so many things that you will see that, ooh, I can fix that right now. It'll save you so many points. The third thing, Watch it as if you're an audience member. Say, you know, what would I be thinking while I'm watching this? You know, can I understand what the demonstration is? Um, do I have good composition in my frame here? Um, can I understand what I'm talking about? Can I hear myself properly? There's all sorts of things. If you just watch, make sure you're paying attention and you're giving it a good critical eye, you will have A plus videos you know, from here until eternity, basically. So what is this leading me to? Well, since we did have a lot of people get dinged for things, I was like, you should have known this. I'm going to be super lenient and do something I really do not do. And in fact, you can talk to all the students I have taught public speaking to in the past and ask them, did Professor Brooks ever let you redo anything? And the answer is no. 
I think this is the first time in the history of my teaching I've ever let people redo an assignment, the whole class. So, and I'm sorry, my self here, I'm covering up part of the headline, but um, this is a redo opportunity for the how to speech with a visual aid. Okay, pay attention. So to take advantage of this opportunity, one, represent your speech, record it, but incorporate the corrections I have made. Now it might involve things that I put specifically to your speech. Um, anything that I corrected you on, feel free to improve, feel free to work with that. Um, and even if I probably didn't call you out on something, but you're like, I could have done that better, fix it. That's awesome. Um, so you're going to redo your how to, you're not going to think of a whole new one. You're going to do the one you already did. So you should already have things still in your brain. It's just a matter of recomposing your shot, turning the camera, um, thinking, watching, making sure you're actually turning in a great product. Um, then number two, if you make a better grade on the redo, I'll give you half of the extra points that you would have earned. Okay, now you're like, half, what does that mean? I'll explain it in just a sec. Now, please know, this redo opportunity is not required. If you are full up busy and you like the grade you got the first time, do nothing, keep working on other stuff, I salute you. But anyone may take advantage of it. And that includes people who forgot to turn it in the first time. I, I was kind of surprised at how many people just forgot to turn it in. Um, we really have to keep up with the schedule. And I know in the videos I've been making, I mentioned, okay, here's what's coming up. Here's what's due. Here's everything happening. Here's the deadline. So it leads me to think either people are not watching all the videos on time. They're not doing all the readings on time. They're not keeping up or maybe something else was happening in the other classes you've been taking to make, draw your attention. But then you were like, Oh, I totally forgot that. Um, this can be redemption for those people. This will be due Sunday, the 12th of March at 11.59. Now I know what you're saying. That's this week. That's this Sunday. It's the day before spring break. It certainly is. Um, I don't want this to get in the way of your other assignments because you've got a lot of things coming up after spring break. And because this is a redo, um, you got to make the best of things. So I know you still have an assignment that's already due this week. Should you choose to redo your how-to speech, it will also be due, but your Midterm assignment is due Friday. This will be due Sunday. You do not have to do the redo. You do need to turn in the midterm assignment. So this is a real make it work moment. All right, so how does the math work? How is my grade going to improve if I do choose to do this? Now, remember, your second video does have to be better. So you can't just throw something together and be like, see, I did it, I get extra points. No, it really has to be a good, better attempt. If you don't do better the second time, I'm just going to be like, I'll send you an up going, you made less points. Um, I don't know how that's possible, but I'm just not even going to count that because I'm not going to take points away from your first speech. So grading examples. Let's say you got 30 points out of the total 50 on your first speech. So you're like, okay, I'll do the redo. And in your second speech, I regrade and I, you get 40 points. You're like, okay. That's a 10 point overall improvement. I take half of that and I add it to your first speech total. So five points is half of 10. And then add that to the 30, you get 35 then for that assignment. Now you're probably like, how come I don't get the 40? Well, because there are consequences to everything. You've already turned in something that got the grade it did. Um, you can, that 35 is way better than a 30. And I can't tell you how many students I've had who would have wished they had five points to do something with toward the end of the semester. So five points may mean a lot to you. Uh, it may not. So this is where you have to choose strategically if you want to do this or not. Second example, for your first speech, let's say you got 25 points, you got half credit. 
Um, so you decide to redo your speech. And in the second attempt, you get 45 points. Wow, that's a lot better. So it's a 20 point overall improvement from your first attempt. 20 divided by half is 10 points. Um, so I add that 10 to your 25, you get a 35, which is a lot better than 25. I take those 10 extra points in a minute. So if you really feel like, ooh, I didn't do that well with this assignment, um, it is in your best interest to do a redo. Even if like this person didn't get 50 points, they didn't make a perfect grade, but it did really have a great effect on what the final grade turned out to be. In the last example, this is what happens if you forgot, didn't turn in the how-to speech. Uh, first speech worth zero points. Let's say you get a perfect score on the second speech. So you have 50 points. Yay, does that mean I get a 50? No. Uh, it's 50 points worth of improvement, which we're going to cut in half. And then so 25 points added to your zero gives you 25. Now you're like, ugh, 25? Well, 25 is way better than a zero. It's mountains better than a zero. Uh, so if it were me, I would do it, even if it means you get 25 points. But there are other examples and other opportunities for extra points, bonus points uh, this semester. In fact, if you look in the syllabus, there is another bonus example in there uh, or another bonus uh, opportunity in there if you look for it. So um, I'm just saying, you know, like I said, if you happen to do a perfect video the second time, I will pat you on the head and say, that's exactly what you should do. But you will get half the points between your first attempt and your second one. And for a lot of people, it will really make a difference with their grade. Uh, you have to decide though. For example, let's say I made uh, 45 points on my first attempt. Um, I might be really busy with other classes and things this week. And I might think, you know, 45 points, I'm good with that. Uh, or I might decide to redo it because uh, I think I can really do a perfect job. And let's say I do a perfect job. So the difference between 50 points and the 45 points gives us five. I give you half that back because it's two and a half. I round up, you get three extra points, which gives you a 48 for this assignment. Now you have to decide, okay, the best I can do is three extra points. Is that important to me? It might be. I have had a lot of students who, toward the end of the semester, they find themselves with an 88, 89, 78, 79, and three points would just be like, yes, it pushes me into a whole other grade level. Um, are you going to be at that point at the end of the term? I hope not. But if you are, you might want that three points. If you're like, you know what, I'm going to save my mental health. I got a 45. I'm going to be perfectly good with it. I will not judge. It is strictly up to you. Shoot, if you um, got a zero the first time because you just forgot to do it and you're still like, you know, I'm swamped with everything else I'm doing. If you decide not to redo, I won't judge that either. That is your choice. You're a student, you're a grown up, and you can choose what you want to do. Make sense? If you don't understand this whole process, send me an email and I will be happy to kind of walk you through it. And we'll look at your first how to speech and decide if it's something you want to redo. Just know that deadline of Sunday night at 11.59 is hard and fast. There are There is no opportunity to redo the redo, okay? All right, so we've talked about the redo opportunity. Let's talk a little bit about your upcoming informative speech. I know it's a lot compared to the first two speeches where you really got to do a lot off the top of your head. Those were really just kind of getting you used to the idea of public speaking, getting you in front of the camera, getting you thinking ahead. This is where we're really using the process. So if you need to go back and rewatch the past couple video lectures, um, it might be a good idea. Uh, even if you've just forgot, ooh, what's the country <laughs> that I'm supposed to use for my general topic? That's in the previous week's video. You need to look at that. So I've got all the steps that we've talked about. There are only a couple things in these steps that we really haven't talked about in great detail, although we've talked about the steps themselves. 
All the resources from the previous weeks, all the links and everything, they're in there. Revisit the example preparation outlines. Use those while you're writing your for real <laughs> preparation outline for our informative speech. And just make sure you're doing it so you have enough time to really practice eventually to get your video well set up to where you know what you're going to say, your outline is well put together, and you're feeling super confident. So let's remember all the steps. First thing to do, reread the assignment. Go to our assignment page, reread it. Make sure you're getting all the details properly. And if you need to reread the syllabus, do that too. Remind yourself, this is a horizontal orientation. That's how we're going to do it. Ah, remember, the assignment says we need an audience. So you need to be thinking about who your audience members are going to be. You need to choose a videographer. Ooh, who's that person going to be? These are things you probably need to start thinking about now. All right, figure out your specific topic and your specific purpose. Everybody has a country that has been assigned to them as a general topic. Doing a little bit of research, you should be able to narrow according to your own interests, according to your own, you know, things that seem cool to you, things that don't seem cool to you, to figure out a specific topic and then the specific purpose for this informative speech. You're going to do a little more research and with the sources you pick up, you're going to start working on your works cited section of the preparation outline. Doing the research, you're going to develop your three or four or five. If you do more than five main points, that's probably too many for the time we have to do. If you do less than three, that's not enough for the time we have to do. So you need at least three, four or five main points. Once you know what your main points are, you can develop your central idea statement. Once you develop your central idea statement, you can really start building your preparation outline with the main points and then the sub points that support those main points. And then even some sub sub points that support the sub points, which support your main points. Um, if you remember the fun of outlining, if you don't go back, revisit some of our earlier videos, reread some chapters, make sure you're on the same page with all of us in class. Okay, next, make sure you're writing in the verbal citations for all the information you're getting from other people, from the people who wrote the sources basically, that you're using to support your main point. At that point, once you get the body of your speech put together, you're going to work on writing your introduction and conclusion. And this is the part that I said, you know, we're going to get to this. Uh, hopefully, you've already read the introductions and conclusions chapter. If you haven't, do it now. When we come back from spring break, we'll have the video lecture for introductions and conclusions. And then... Once you get your introduction and your conclusion all outlined, if you need transitions between your main points or between the body and your conclusion, you know, put them in. Then we do have an opportunity for you to turn in your preparation outline for review. I will take a look at it and make suggestions. Here's what I think you should do here. Oh, you didn't have full sentences throughout. You need to rewrite this so it has full sentences. Um, this doesn't look like a main point to me. It looks like a sub point for this thing. You know, I will make all sorts of recommendations that you can use to really make your outline perfect. I don't know why I'm doing this a lot lately. It's weird. It's an affectation I've developed. So I will talk about the deadline for when that will come up. Um, it's optional. You do not have to turn in your outline for review. I would recommend it. Uh, practice. Practice, practice, practice giving your speech and develop your speaking outline, which are the note cards you'll use when you're giving your speech. So while you're practicing, you'll be like, OK, what are the things I have to remember going forward? What are the very basic, you know, points? Do, 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 do. How should I remind myself of delivery cues? You know, um, this is a question. I need to have more inflection when I ask this question or ooh, when I practice my speech before it only lasted like three minutes, but I, I think it was rushing. So slow down. I'm going to write that on my speaking outline. 
This is where you write your notes that will help you give your speech. And as you practice and you practice and you work with your speaking outline, you will get better and better to where you really don't need those notes, but you have them. They make you feel more confident. And if while you're giving your speech, you're like, ooh, you look down. Okay, that's where I am. I can keep going now. Once you're just perfect, you'll get your audience together. You'll record your speech. You will watch it. You'll make sure it's good. Um, do it until you're happy with it. If your friends that you have for your audience are your friends, uh, they will help you and they won't act squirrely when you're trying to give your speech. Um, when you're happy with it, you've watched it, you're like, I'm framed well, I did a great job, I pat myself on the back, upload it to your YouTube channel. You're gonna turn in your preparation outline with the YouTube link in it by the deadline. So this speech, your informative speech, half of the points are related to how well you do the outline. And half of the points are related to how well you presented the speech. So don't think my outline is awesome. You know, uh, how I give the speech, you know, I, I can lose all those points. No, don't do that. You'll end up with 38 points and that would be terrible. Um, so work on, make sure you have a great outline, but then really practice to make sure both parts are awesome. They're like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Peanut butter, delicious. Chocolate, it's also delicious. Put them together, it's magnificent. I want a magnificent peanut butter cup of an informative speech. All right, any questions, once again, contact me, email me. Let me know, I'm happy to help. All right, so, whoo, reminders for this week. Firstly, your midterm infographic assignment is due this Friday the 10th at 1159. If you need to go back and review the assignment, please do. I've already uh, had some chats with some members of our class and they've got some really cool ideas for things they're doing for infographics. I will show off some really good examples, I'm sure, in coming videos. If you Decide to redo your how-to speech with visual aid. That will be due Sunday the 12th, also at 11.59. Once again, it's not required, but if you choose to do it, that is the absolute deadline. Next week is spring break. Uh, do you have to do stuff in our class over spring break? You don't have to. You know, I'm not your mom calling you up. Are you working? You know, no. But if you feel like I'm kind of behind. I really want to do a lot better on this informative speech. Um, it's probably a good idea to do some things while you're out having a good time. Be on the beach, you know, hey, look up some research for your topic. Um, if you're at home, you know, playing video games with people, at the times when you're not doing the Mario Kart, maybe you're over with your laptop somewhere else going, okay, let's make my work cited citations do properly, you know, do something. Don't, you know, let things get away to where the minute you're back from spring break, you have a mountain of things to do. All right, the informative speech outline check is due Friday the 24th. So that's the week after spring break at 11.59. Again, it's not required. You don't have to get your outline checked. I recommend it because it's one of the easy things you can do to really guarantee you give yourself the best opportunity for an A. I will tell you, hey, you don't have everything as a full sentence. Your outlining is a little off right here. Um, I think you don't have enough main points. You have two. Remember I said you need three or this doesn't look like enough speech for four minutes, you know, um, or, you know, who knows? Maybe I don't think your specific topic is specific enough. Uh, I would probably call you at that point and say, okay, we need to talk about this. But a lot of things are easily fixed and I'm happy to point them out to you. You can get your outline checked. All you have to do is fix them, then practice, practice, practice. Speech is coming up. You'll be great. So like I said, you don't have to do it. Um, it does mean you have to have your outline in a turnable form by Friday the 24th, uh, which means you do have to do things you know, in a timely fashion, but uh, if you can make it happen, I say do it. I say do it. Um, you don't have to, I would. 
All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I hope all of this made sense. I'm going to be reaching out to everybody after spring break where we will set up times for me to chat with everybody one-on-one. -on -one. There'll be half hour little conversations. So don't think it's going to be a long drawn out discussion of your hopes, dreams, and aspirations. No, we're going to find out how well you're being organized. Uh, are you happy with the grades you're making? Maybe there's something we can talk about going forward to ensure you do your best work ever for the really jam-packed second half of our class. In the meantime, I hope you have a great spring break. Um, I hope you're very safe. You know, um, spring break can be a time to really let your hair down and have a great time. Just don't let your hair down so far low that it gets caught up in something and flings you all directions. Uh, I will see you in another video after spring break and just be ready. It's the end of the semester on its way. We got a lot to do, but we can do it. All right, I'll see you next time.